Please rise as you are able. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to all hearts are open, all desires known, and from no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and magnify the holy name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. So let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Most merciful God, we, we confess, confess that, that we are captive to sin and cannot, cannot free, free ourselves. ourselves. We, we have, have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us. Renew us and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for you, and for his sake, God forgives you all your sins. He's a call and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.
please be seated. Today we have a, the wonderful privilege of having two baptisms for Jeremy and David DeSherry. That'll be coming up fairly soon. And another great part of today is we have the Reverend Dr. Samuel McPeak who will be preaching for us, and he's here today with his wife, Lynn. Uh, what a great time to proclaim the gospel, and we thank you for being here. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Now let us pray. O powerful God, in Jesus Christ you turn death into life and defeat into victory. Increase our faith and trust in him that we may triumph over all evil in the strength of the same Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. A reading from Genesis. Adam and Eve heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden at the time of the evening breeze. And the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man and said to him, Where are you? He said, I heard the sound of you in the garden, and I was afraid, because I was naked and I hid myself. He said, who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? 
The man said, the woman whom you gave to be with me, she gave me the fruit from the tree, and I ate. Then the Lord God said to the woman, what is this that you have done? The woman said, the serpent tricked me, and I ate. The Lord God said to the serpent, because you have done this, cursed are you among all animals and among all wild creatures. Upon your belly shall you go, and dust you shall eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and hers. He will strike your head and you will strike his heel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from 2 Corinthians. Just as we have the same spirit of faith that is in accordance with scripture, I believed and so I spoke. We also believe and so we speak because we know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus and will bring us with you into his presence. Yes, everything is for your sake so that grace as it extends to more and more people may increase thanksgiving to the glory of God. So we do not lose heart. Even though our outer nature is wasting away, our inner nature is being renewed day by day. For this slight momentary affliction is preparing us for an eternal weight of glory beyond all measure, because we look not at what can be seen, but at what cannot be seen. For what can be seen is temporary, but what cannot be seen is eternal. For we know that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the third chapter. Jesus came home, and the crowd came together again so that Jesus and his disciples could not eat. When his family heard of this, they went out to restrain him, for people were saying, He has gone out of his mind. And the scribes who came down from Jerusalem said, he has Beelzebul, and by the ruler of demons, he casts out demons. And Jesus called them to himself and spoke to them in parables, saying, How can Satan cast out Satan? If a kingdom is set against, is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house is divided against itself, that house will not be able to stand. And if Satan has risen up against himself and is divided, he cannot stand, but his end has come. But no, no one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his property without first binding up the strong man. And then, indeed, the house can be plundered. Truly, I tell you, people will be forgiven of their sins and whatever blasphemies they utter. But whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit can never have forgiveness, but is guilty of an eternal sin. 
Jesus said this, for they had said, He has an unclean spirit. Then his mother and his brothers came, and standing outside, they sent to him and called him. And a crowd was sitting around him, and they said to him, Your mother and your brothers and sisters are outside asking for you. And Jesus replied, Who are my mother and my brothers? And looking at those around him, he said, Here are my mother and my brothers. Whoever does the will of God is my brother and sister and mother. This is the gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. My dear friends in Christ Jesus, our Lord, will you pray with me? Almighty God, before whom all hearts are open, all desires are known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts this day by inspiration of your Holy Spirit, and fashion within us a temple that is worthy to bring you honor and praise. Amen. She was really nothing to look at. As a matter of fact, from her hair to her shoes on her feet, she was somewhat comical as she walked out on the stage. Unlike so many others who had gone before her who were young, and eager and ideal in their wishes, she was a little bit older, or as I like to say, a little bit more mature. She was 47. And when she was asked, what do you wish to do here today? She said, I want to be famous. There were snickers in the audience and one of the judges rolled his eyes, and another just kind of shook their head in disbelief. But then it happened. She began to sing. I dreamed a dream. And in the power of the music, and in the power of her voice, those Sneers and jeers were turned to cheers as she amazed everyone there in the auditorium. One of the judges said this was the biggest surprise that he had ever seen. Another judge said, we were very cynical and we ask your forgiveness. And the third judge, well, Simon being Simon, was Simon. Because there was more to, sh uh, to Sharon Boyle than met the eye. And perhaps you've experienced things like that yourself. Perhaps the same kind of reaction to something that you've wanted to accomplish, something you've wanted to do, has met the same kind of cynicism. And how there has been more to you than has met the eye. I think on tomorrow, June 6th, 1944, when young men from the fields and factories went to war and took place, took part in the invasion of Nor Normandy, there were also many there that day in whom there was more than met the eye. Our gospel reading this, morning, this evening is from Mark chapter 3. And I must be quite honest with you about this text. In all of my years in parish ministry, I would look at the lessons that were coming up in June and July, and I would plan my vacation 
on where this lesson was going to follow in the readings because I did not want to preach on this text. This is a very hard text to preach on. There is not much word of comfort here. There's not much word of uplifting spirituality. As a matter of fact, it's a lot of just the opposite. I told Pastor Joe before church this evening that I offered to preach on this weekend, and then I read what the lessons were. And I tried to think of a way of backing out. But I thought, I just can't do that. So as we think about these words from the third chapter of Mark, what I want to say is there's more to this text than meets the eye, even as there was more to Jesus than met the eye of those that he encounters in these words this evening. How can things go so wrong so quickly? We're only in the third chapter of Mark's Gospel. We're not that far along in the ministry of Jesus as Mark tells it. It was just back in chapter 1 where Jesus makes his appearance he enters into Galilee and he proclaims, Behold, the kingdom of God is near. Repent and believe the good news. And even in spite of that power to proclaim the good news, things have gone wrong. On the one hand, the crowds have followed him and been drawn to him as Metal is to a magnet. They are enthused and enthralled by what they hear and what they see. He has healed lepers. He has cast out demons. His popularity and his fame is growing and growing, but those closest to him are very skeptical. His family has come to rescue him because he's so busy he can't even take time to eat. Certainly he's crazy. Certainly he's lost his mind, they think. And then there are the religious authorities who have been watching everything that's been going on. And they say, well, he's demon-possessed. He's casting out demons because the father of demons is on his side. They were judging Jesus on the basis of their own preconceived notions, on the basis of what their own eyes were able to see and the norms and rules that had been established based upon that. And Jesus wasn't playing by their rules. He was playing by a more divine set of rules. A set of rules and a power of inclusivity that brought people to himself. But why was that? Perhaps if we go back to our Old Testament reading for this weekend from Genesis 3, we get a bit of a clue when our first parents, Adam and Eve, were there in the Garden of Eden and God has provided with everything they need to support this body and soul and life, and yet in that bit comes the voice of the tempter who says, you know, you really can't trust what God says. God's holding out on you. You need to trust your own judgment. You need to trust your own perceptions and how you see things. You need to have this knowledge of good and evil. Then everything will be in control. You will be able to control everything. And isn't it that the way that it is for us so many times? How we want 
to control and how we want to order our universe and our world in such a way that we are able to protect ourselves against those things that we don't understand or that may very, be very frightening toward us. So in these words, what Jesus is saying, not only to the audience then, but to you and me today, as he has come to establish a new world, a new family, a family that is not determined by DNA, is not determined by what we see, but what we do not see. The Spirit of God at work. Paul reminds us in our New Testament reading for today that the things that we see are passing away, but God is building a new house, a new home, with the foundations deeply rooted in the grace and compassion of God. There's more to God and more to who Jesus is than what meets our eyes or satisfies our expectations. The reason we're here this weekend is that tomorrow morning I get to baptize my granddaughters. And we've been watching those little girls for the last four months as they've been changing and we've been wondering just exactly what they're going to be like. We, we look at them and we say, well, we see a little bit of their father here and a little bit of their mother here. And we see a little bit of this. What are they going to be like? But as all of you, I'm sure, have learned, there's more to our children or our grandchildren than meets the eye. So in baptism, there's more to baptism than meets the eye. For David and Jeremy this evening who come to be baptized, it is not simple water only, but it is the word and promise connected with that water. That God sees into you and me more than our own eyes our own ears can ever understand or experience. There is more to God's grace and forgiveness and compassion than meets the eye. Amen.
The God who is rich in mercy and love gives us new birth into living hope through the baptism, through the sacrament of baptism. By water and the word, God delivers us from sin and death and raises us into new life in Jesus Christ. We are reunited with all the baptized in one body of Christ, anointed with the gift of the Holy Spirit, and joined in God's mission for the life of the world. David Allen Desherry, called by the Holy Spirit, trusting into the grace and love, do you desire to baptize into Christ? Say, I do. I do. The parent. I present Jeremy Odin and Desherry for baptism. Called by the Holy Spirit, and trusting in the grace and love of God, do you desire to have Jeremy baptized into Christ? I do. I do. As you bring Jeremy to receive this gift of baptism, you are entrusted with responsibility to live with them among God's faithful people, bring them into the word of God and the Holy Supper, teach the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and the Ten Commandments, place them in the into Jeremy's hands, the Holy Scripture, and nurture his faith and faith in faith and in prayer, so that Jeremy may learn to trust God, proclaim Christ through word and deed, and care for others in the world God made, and work for justice and peace. Do you promise to help Jeremy grow in the Christian faith and life? I do. Sponsors. Do you promise to nurture Jeremy in the Christian faith as you are empowered by God's Spirit and to help them live in a covenant of baptism and communion with the church? People of God, do you promise to support David and Jeremy and pray for them and their new life in Christ? If so, say, we do. Do you want to please rise as you're able? Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? I renounce them. Do you renounce the powers of the world that re rebel against God? I renounce them. Do you renounce the ways of sin that draw you from God? I renounce them. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood, you delivered Noah and his family, and through the sea, you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By the baptism of Jesus' death and resurrection, you set us free from the power of sin and death and raise us to live in you. Pour out your spirit and the power of your living word that we be washed in the waters of baptism may be given new life. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen.
We give thanks, O God, that through the water and the Holy Spirit, you've given your daughters and sons new birth, cleanse them from sin, and raise them to eternal life. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, that through water and the Holy Spirit you give your daughters and sons new birth, cleanse them from sin, and raise them to eternal life. Sustain David Allen and Jeremy Irving with the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence both now and forever. Amen. We ask you that each, each year on this day, for Jeremy to light this candle to remind him of this, his baptismal day. Okay, David? Thanks, O God, that through the water of the Holy Spirit you give your daughters and sons new birth and cleanse them from sin and raise them to eternal life. Amen. We seal by the Holy Spirit and mark the cross of Christ forever. Let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Let us welcome the newly baptized. And we welcome you into the body of Christ and into, into the, the mission, mission we share. Join us in giving thanks and praise to God and bearing God's creative and redeeming word to all the world. Let's give them a round of applause and welcome. Let us come before the triune God in prayer. God of wholeness, we pray for believers all over the globe. Unify us in service of the gospel, that me, we may work together as beloved siblings to share your love with all. We celebrate the gift of baptism and rejoice with the newly baptized. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of the cosmos, we pray for creation, the gardens, waterways, and creatures near to us, and diverse forms of life that remains unseen. Teach us to treat the natural world with reverence, seeking restoration when human divisions have caused harm to your beloved creation. Lord, in your mercy. God of abundance, we pray for those who are oppressed or in any need. Encourage those who have begun to lose heart. Strengthen and renew us with your spirit. Restore to wholeness all who are in any need this day. Heal the sick and comfort the grieving. We pray especially for Carla, Carrie, Rob, Candy, Gloria, Peggy, Thomas, Brandy, Stephen, Justin, Jim, Mary, Jason, Anne, Michael, John, Scott, Barbara, Victor, Mike, Jan, Cindy, Dale, Bob, and Emily. 
Comfort Laura and Mark Homa and family on the loss of Laura's mother, Lorelei Peterson, and surround them with your peace. For all victims of violence, all affected by natural disasters, storms, flooding, earthquakes, and wildfires, bring relief to all afflicted with COVID-19. Strengthen caregivers, health workers, and all who are working to end this pandemic. And for all others who we now name in our hearts, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of righteousness, we pray for this holy house of worship. Set our gaze upon things eternal, that in thanksgiving for your mercy, we may extend grace to more and more people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of the ages, in your goodness, you have sent us faithful witnesses for every time and place. We give you thanks for those saints who now rest in your eternal mercy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We lift our prayers to you, O God, trusting in your abiding grace. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Please rise as you are able. And so now let us pray. Holy God, gracious and merciful, you bring forth food from the earth and you nourish your whole creation. Turn our hearts toward those who hunger in any way, that all may know your care, and prepare us now to feast on the bread of life. 
Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. <clears throat> and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them, them to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It's indeed our right, <clears throat> our duty, and our joy that we should all times and all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God. Through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death in the grave and by his glorious resurrection, opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so, with all the choirs of angels and the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name, join your unending hymn. Dr. McPeak said in his sermon, there's more than meets the eye. This is not just simple bread and wine. It is the body and blood of Christ. This is a visual sign of God's invisible grace. We are reminded of that on the night that Jesus was betrayed. He took bread and he gave thanks and he broke it. He gave it to all to eat, saying, this is my body given for you. Do this when you remember me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and he gave thanks and gave it to all the drink, saying, This cup is new covenant in my blood, which is shed for and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this when you remember me. Because of that night, we are now bold to pray the perfect prayer that Jesus taught us. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be your name. name. Thy your kingdom, kingdom come, come thy will, will be, be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our, our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Taste and see that the Lord is good. All are welcome. Please be seated. Open up your communion kits. For this is the body of Christ given for you. Amen. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. Body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ, strengthen and keep in His grace. Amen. Let Please us pray. Rise if you're able. <clears throat> Let us pray. We give you thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. 
In your mercy, strengthen us through this gift, in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now prepare for the blessing. Almighty God, Father and Son and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Now go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.